1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you will proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Today's Mass has been offered for Johnny Robert. As we come to pray, we have the beautiful Sermon on the Mount. Let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Johnny Robert. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow on abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure, to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, of the grace of God that has been given to the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their profound poverty overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For according to their means, I can testify, and beyond their means, spontaneously, they begged us insistently for the favor of taking part in the service to the Holy Ones, and this not as we expected. But they gave themselves first to the Lord and to us through the will of God, so that we urged Titus that, as he had already begun, he should also complete for you the gracious act also. Now as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. I say this not by way of command, but to test the genuineness of your love for, by your concern for others. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that for your sake he became poor, although he was rich so that by his poverty you might become rich. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm number 146. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise, Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. Praise, Praise the Lord, my soul. soul. Blessed he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Praise, Praise the Lord, my soul. soul. Who keeps faith forever, 
secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise, Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives strength to the blind. The Lord raises up those who will bow down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes the sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Just a uh, little announcement here before we begin. Uh, we're going to be starting up our RCIA program in August. So if you have any friends or family members who are interested in learning more about the Catholic faith and potentially joining the church, please contact either myself or Father Patty. So today's gospel is from the Gospel of Matthew. And it is commonly termed the Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew 5 through 7. So this puts our puts our reading, Matthew verse five, uh, chapter 5, verses 43 through 48, near the end of that first part of the sermon. And because it's at the end of that chapter, much has happened to bring us to this point in the gospel. So to put today's readings in context, we need to look at the preceding readings to see what was going on. So Matthew sets the scene in verse 1 through 2. He says, when he saw the crowd, he went up on the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to them, and he began to teach them. Jesus goes up on the mountain, off in a place of divine revelation, like Moses going up to Mount Sinai. He sits down, and this is, this is the posture of a rabbi. This is what rabbis do when they're going to teach their disciples. And what does he teach? He teaches them the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 3 through 16. Jesus is imparting to his disciples the characteristics and disposition they are to possess as his disciples. In addition, he's teaching the crowd of potential disciples and us as well what it takes to follow him, what we must do to share God's love in the world. Next, in Matthew 5, 17 through 20, Jesus established that he is the fulfillment of the law, that he has the authority to interpret the law. And he uses this phrase to express his authority. He says, amen, I say to you. And Jesus uses that authority to redefine the law and give six examples of that. The first two examples cover murder and adultery. Divorce and, and oath-taking are the next two topics covered. And the fifth is the subject of retribution. And these are Matthew 5, 21 to 42. And so with that, we arrive 
at today's reading, where Jesus is calling us to love our enemy. See, in all these examples, Jesus is calling us as, the, as his, his disciples to a higher standard. Jesus is bringing out the true meaning of God's law. My brothers and sisters, this standard that we are called to as disciples of Christ means that we are required to have God's law penetrate our hearts, to allow it to be a guide to lead us to living according to God's ultimate intention. What is God's ultimate intention for us? Jesus tells us in the last line of today's reading, be perfect just as your heavenly Father is perfect. While our fallen human nature will never allow us to be perfect in love like God, we do have the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the sacraments to help us. As we continue this celebration of our Mass, ask the Holy Spirit to guide us towards the love that Jesus wants us to live. Let the graces of the sacraments we receive strengthen us in that love, a love that is not tainted by anger or lust, a love that is committed to one's marriage and to one's word, a love that seeks what is even best for one's enemy, a love that makes us disciples of Christ. Let us pray for Johnny Robert, for uh, Molly Jimenez, for um, Wade Cuevas, for all those who have asked for special prayers, for all those who find life burdensome at this time. May God be with them in a special way to heal them and to comfort them. Let us pray. We pray for the intercession of St. Joseph, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, protector of the Holy Church. To guard us in these times of turmoil, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord God, God. for Pope Francis, that he guides the church with wisdom and humility. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord God, God, pray. that all bishops, priests, and deacons have the courage to speak the truth in these difficult times. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord God, 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 pray. the quad process that it builds the church by building disciples. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord God, God, pray. pray that those suffering will link their suffering to the redemptive suffering of Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and all its opportunities. May we live this day giving honor and glory to God through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God of Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. By the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, those most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We will lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and to raise to you a hymn of glory and praise. O Lord, Father of infinite goodness, for by the word of your Son's gospel you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation 
and having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease to her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly in earth, while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And today a quote from Mother Teresa on the Eucharist. If I can give you any advice, I beg you to get close to the Eucharist and to Jesus. We must pray to Jesus to give us that tenderness of the Eucharist. And we pray the first Eucharistic prayer of the special ones in our Missa. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when his one for his disciples are not for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his past and death at the cross of the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the past and sacrifice of Christ and be handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and to the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is the most holy trinity, past Christian, by the light of the gospel, Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep with the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours ever and ever. Any one day we get multiple requests for prayer, so let us bring all our prayers to God now as we pray the prayer Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you already. And with you, Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternity. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at me spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant we pray that this gift, which we himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for me. today is on the first reading, 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 9. This is a letter to the Church of Corinth, and it's about giving. Paul never uses the word money. He was raising money for the church in Jerusalem, which was struggling financially. He begins by talking about the churches of Macedonia. Macedonia is in the northern part of Greece, and it's the former homeland of Alexander the Great. When it was conquered by the Romans, they took all of its great wealth and left the citizens of this area very poor. The southern part of Greece was called Achaia, and the city of Corinth was in this region because of its location, it was commercially wealthy. Paul begins his letter by praising the churches of Macedonia. <clears throat> he writes, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. The grace of God Paul considers both the opportunity and the willingness to give a gift, to be from the grace of God. He writes about the trials of the Macedonian people in their deep poverty. He also writes of their abundance of joy and their extreme generosity. Paul knew that the Macedonians gave in two ways. First, they gave according to their ability to give. It wasn't a large gift in total dollar amount, but they gave from their heart. They gave freely and they gave willingly. And they gave beyond their ability in proportion to what they actually could afford. The account of the widow's giving in Luke 21, 1 through 4, illustrates the same point. She only gave two mites, which was a very small amount of money. She gave according to her ability. Nevertheless, since she gave all she had, she gave beyond her ability. The same principle of giving was evident in the Macedonian Christians. Freely giving 
imploring us to much urgency that we may receive the gift. Paul didn't have to beg for money from the Macedonian churches. He wouldn't have anyway. Instead, they were begging him to receive the gift. Because they first gave themselves to the Lord, then they gave their trust to Paul and to the disciples. This is why the Macedonians were such good examples of giving. In giving, the real issue isn't giving money. It's giving ourselves to the Lord. If we really give ourselves to the Lord, then the giving of material things will naturally follow. In verses 6 through 8, so we urged Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. God's associate, Titus, is the bearer of this letter. He was supposed to encourage the Corinthians to actually give him the collection, and then he would give it to Paul. We can imagine that the Corinthian Christians were willing to take up a collection and to give the money to Paul to take to Jerusalem. However, Things had become difficult between Paul and the Corinthians. This was one reason Paul sent Titus rather than coming himself. And when he writes about completing the grace, the Corinthian Christians may have intended to give or thought about giving and been receptive to the idea of giving, but unless they followed through, all of these actions were useless. So now Paul writes, but as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in grace also. I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. The Corinthian Christians probably believed they did abound in all of these things. Paul's challenging them. So this is the fourth time Paul uses the word grace to refer to giving money. The fact that Paul uses the ancient Greek word charis to describe financial giving has a few meanings. The ability to give and the heart to give is a free gift from God. Giving is a work of God's grace in us. We should never think because someone writes a large check that it's a substitute for being involved. Giving a financial gift is involvement. It demonstrates a true work of God's grace in the heart. Giving should be done freely. Giving is a work of God's grace in us. The motive for our giving should be because the love and generosity of God is so big in our heart that we simply must give. And like God's grace to us, giving should be offered without expectation of payment in return. God does not give to us expecting pay back. We can never repay God. We can always serve Him and love Him in return. I couldn't help but think about our church growing up next door. Four and a half years ago, it was but a dream, a goal, a challenge. How were we ever going to raise the money to build this beautiful house of prayer? When my husband completed the plans for the church and came up with a dollar amount, the price was $5.4 million. And we had to have half before the archdiocese would allow us to begin building. All of you already know about the various projects for raising money for the building and the furnishings in it. Pew sponsors, stained glass window sponsors, bricks for the grotto, the building club, golf tournaments, spring raffles, second collection, mm -hmm. and so much more, including the children who came with their little church banks a year ago Easter. Thanks to the grace of the Belfasses, who generously gave a donation large enough to put us over the halfway mark, we were able to begin a year earlier than we had projected. I can also remember at one of the many meetings of the building committee, it was estimated that we would need to borrow $1.5 million when our church was completed. Now that estimate is less than 500000 We owe so much to the leadership of Father Pat. I can remember when he announced that the $50,000 organ needed a sponsor. <laughs> the skeptics laughed out loud. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't laugh out loud, Father. <laughs> Three weeks later, he announced we had a sponsor for the organ. This is a man of amazing faith and amazing grace. When we see that the matter of giving is centered around the word grace, 
It is, it lifts that whole act from duty and obligation. It becomes something beautiful and glorious in our Christian life. And that's what Paul was trying to get across to the Corinthians. Every gift to most holy trinity, no matter how large or how small, is an act of grace through the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. Yes, we're blessed to have fantastic, generous people here and lots of good friends throughout our parish as well that have helped us. Got a cute email here, and it's about money. <laughs> An old country pastor who raised chickens happened across a mysterious box in his closet. The box contained three eggs and a thousand one dollar bills. Amazed, he called his wife to ask her about his find. Embarrassed, she admitted to having hidden the box their entire 45 years of marriage. Curious, the pastor asked, why would you hide this from me? Oh, I never meant to hurt your feelings, his wife replied. What do you mean, hurt my feelings? How could this box hurt my feelings? Well, she responded, every time I heard you preach a poor sermon, I put an egg in the box. The pastor thought, that poor that three poor servants in 45 years was nothing to feel badly about. So he asked her why the money was there. His wife replied, well, every time I got a dozen eggs, I sold them to my neighbor for a dollar. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> and the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Masses ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Be to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us a cry of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created anew as the heavens and the earth are the Lord's. Lord, you have blessed us with many gifts and many blessings. 